So this could be my most controversial review yet. Because when you have anything bad to say about a comic book blockbuster, let's get ready to troll! In fact, uh, I think I'm having like a, a Tony Stark panic attack. Like, I, I need a suit to uh, protect me from the onslaught. Uh, Tony, what have you got? Well, the Hulkbuster is the only one in my size. Crap, that's expensive. Here it is, the first Marvel movie in a post-Avengers world. And yes, I will address the fact that it is unfair to compare it to the Avengers, but isn't unfair to compare it to Iron Man 2. The reason I bring this up is because Iron Man 3 is already in a tough spot. It's between a rock and a hard place. Or a genius and a piece of crap. But this is my initial reaction. Is it as good as the Avengers? No. Is it as bad as Iron Man 2? No. But is that the standard we want to hold it to? Remember that I also didn't set that standard. Marvel did. I equate it to The Dark Knight Rises. It was almost in a no-win situation because The Dark Knight was arguably the greatest comic book adaptation of all time. In the third part of a trilogy, there are certain things you have to do with the character, regardless if it's the final chapter in the franchise or not. In this Iron Man, just like they did with Bruce Wayne in The Dark Knight Rises, they really break Tony down. He loses almost everything. His relationship with Pepper is in trouble. As you see in the trailer, his house gets totaled. And he even loses his trademark swagger because he has post-traumatic stress disorder from what happened in the events in The Avengers. Which was one of my favorite parts. They dealt with what happened in a realistic manner. I mean, as realistic as you can make it. The climax of this film was as epic as you needed it to be, and it was definitely my favorite part of the movie. I loved seeing all the different armors, this giant army of Iron Man suits coming at you. I wish they featured them more. And my hat's off to the amazing visual effects wizards that brought them to life because they look fantastic. There was a huge and sometimes slow build up to the scene and it didn't disappoint. And therefore the Iron Legion is Iron Man 3's for the win. Now we get to the hard place. If you think you're going to see the dark toned film that the trailer hints at, huh, you could not be more mistaken. In the trailers you see destruction and mayhem, Sir Ben Kingsley spouting off terrorist jargon, and Tony vowing revenge. That's not really what you get. Again, another comparison to Dark Knight Rises, the film was less about Iron Man and more about Tony. Having the film more about Tony and less about Iron Man is great, but the flip side to that is that the tension and the buildup of hatred between he and the antagonist is lessened. I was hard pressed to understand why Guy Pearce's Aldrich Killian became a supervillain in the first place. I mean all it was was that 13 years ago Tony kind of bullied him and stood him up on New Year's Eve. That makes you want to destroy the world? That and the fact that he's named Killian, that pretty much sets you up for super villainy. I will also address the twist, which is arguably the most controversial part of this film. And I won't divulge it, because I don't want to spoil things. I didn't have an issue with the fact that they had a twist. I'm not an Iron Man purist. You can change the mythology as much as you want. I had an issue with how they revealed the twist. My biggest complaint about this film was that on a consistent basis, I really felt it insulted your intelligence. It seemed to not take itself seriously, and as a result, I felt it didn't take the audience seriously, and the twist specifically really lost me. I felt at one point I was watching an Austin Powers flick. I also want to preface that I'm a huge fan of Shane Black. Dude was in Predator. His Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is one of my favorite films of all time, and you can really sense his stamp on Iron Man 3 almost right away. The gist of this is, I know they can do better. Shane Black can do better. Marvel can do better. And filmmakers like Whedon and Nolan have shown that you don't have to pander to or patronize audiences. This has also shown that there may be a problem with my polar rating system. So this is what I'm going to do. It's an earn it if you want to go see a movie that has everything you'd want to see in an Iron Man movie. A good performance from Robert Downey Jr., good action, and comedic moments. It's a burn it because I felt that those comedic moments went too far. They were far too prevalent and the film really lost its direction. How's that for diplomacy? Like I said, this review and the movie I think is going to be a little controversial. Let's hope the rest of Marvel Phase 2 becomes a little stronger as we go along. My poll question for today is what was your favorite Marvel Phase 1 film? As always, leave your answers in the comment section below, and until next time, school's out.